Hey people, it's Niles talking. Now I saw this story and I thought it was interesting because it related to a lot of things black folks talk about. So I wanted to cover it. So this is from BBC The Court of UK. Sun sues Meta over father's killing in Ethiopia. Facebook's algorithm helped fuel the viral spread of hate and violence during Ethiopia's civil war, a legal case alleges. Abraham Mirek, the son of an Ethiopian academic, shot dead after being attacked in Facebook posts, is among those bringing the case against Meta. They want a $2 billion, £1.6 billion fund for victims of hate on Facebook and changes to the platform's algorithm. Meta said it invested heavily in moderation and tech to remove hate. A representative said hate speech and incitement to violence were against the platform's rules. Our safety and integrity work in Ethiopia is guided by feedback from local civil society organizations and international institutions, the representative said. Famine-like conditions. The case filed in Kenya's high court is supported by a campaign group Fox Club. Meta has a content moderation hub in Kenyan capital Nairobi. Hundreds of thousands of people have died in the conflict between the Ethiopian government and forces in the northern Tigray region with 400,000 others living in famine-like conditions. Last month, a surprise peace deal was agreed, but recently there has been an upsurge in ethnically motivated killings between Amhara and Oromo-speaking communities. And I just want to give some information for my uh, black American, Tijuanian black American audience who don't understand uh, how ethnicity and race works in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, you can have light-skinned people, brown-skinned people, and black-skinned people, and they're all considered part of one ethnic group. So you can have people like the Oromo, you have light-skinned people who look like they're mixed. It's far more important within Ethiopia or what tribe you belong to and what language you speak than what you may physically and phenotypically look like. So that's just to give a little bit of background for my viewers watching in America. So anyway, last year, Mr. Mirek's father became one of the casualties of the country's violence. On 3rd of November 2021, Professor Mirek Amare Abra was followed home from his university by armed men on motorbikes and shot close range trying to enter the family home. Threats from his attackers prevented witnesses coming to his aid as he lay bleeding, his son says. He died laying on the ground, lying on the ground seven hours later. Before the attack, Facebook posts slandered and revealed identifying information about him, his son says. Despite repeated complaints using Facebook's reporting tool, the platform left these posts up until it was far too late. One was removed after his father's killing. Another, which the platform had committed to remove, remained online as of December 8, 2022. If Facebook had just stopped the spread of hate and moderated posts properly, my father would still be alive, Mr. Murek said. He wanted to ensure no family suffered as his had, he said, and a personal apology from Meta. In a sworn statement filed with the court, Mr. Mireg alleges Facebook's algorithm promotes hateful and inciting content because it is likely to draw more interaction from users. And I want to personally say this, you know, if you post anything that talks about um, the, the disease from China, anything that is critical of the government or the established view, it will be taken down very quickly and you will be friend with having your page removed. But this... Yeah, they suddenly say, well, it needs to be moderated. It's funny how things that incite hate against black people take a long time to be dealt with, but anything that they want to get rid of, it's suddenly gone, just like the snap of a button. Incredible. Truly incredible. He also claims Facebook's content moderation in Africa is woefully inadequate, with too few moderators who deal with posts in key languages, Amharic, Oromo, and Tigrinya. Meta, which owns Facebook, told BBC News, We employ staff with local knowledge and expertise and continue to develop our capabilities to catch violating content in the most widely spoken languages in the country, including Amharic, Oromo, Somali, and Tigrinya. It maintains Ethiopia as a high priority, although less than 10% of the population uses Facebook, and says the steps it has taken include reducing post-virality, expanding violence, incitement policies, improving enforcement. Even so, the way you already call it, gossip moves around, it only takes a small fraction of the population having access to it for them to take that and then to spread it to their friends and neighbors or fa- family as well. Let's keep going. Analysis by Peter Mawai, BBC Reality Check Nairobi. This is, signif- this is a significant development and attempt to legally take to task a social media 
company over its actions during the conflict in Ethiopia. Critics say Meta and other social media companies do too little to prevent the sharing and spread of disinformation and content promoting hate and incitement against various ethnic groups. In some cases, it takes too long for content to be removed, mostly after people report it. Others claim the company has been unfair in its crackdown on hateful content, targeting posts written in some languages disproportionately. Meta has always insisted it does a lot and has heavily investigate, invested in capacity to catch hateful and inflammatory content in the languages spoken most widely in the country. It does have content moderators conversant with the main local languages, but also relies on artificial intelligence and local partners to flag content. And now many moderators work with Meta focusing on Ethiopia has never been clear. But this is not the first time Facebook has accused of doing too little to solve the spread of discontent, promoting ethnic hate and violence in Ethiopia. In 2021, whistleblower Francis Horgan, a former employee, told the US Senate the platform's algorithm was fanning ethnic violence, picking up the extreme sentiments, the division, as those posts attracted high engagement. <coughs> While Facebook could not adequately identify dangerous content and lacked sufficient expertise in many local languages, including some spoken in Ethiopia. Other plaintiffs in the case include the Katiba Institute and Fiseh Tekle, who alleges Facebook's moderation failures made his human rights reporting on the conflict for Amnesty International impossible and risked his family's lives. They're asking the court to order Facebook to step take steps to remedy the situation, including creating a restitution fund of about 200 billion Kenyan shillings. $1.6 billion for victims of hate and violence cited on Facebook, and a further 50 billion Kenyan sh shillings for similar harm for sponsored events. Prevent its algorithm recommending insightful, hateful, and dangerous content, employing enough moderators to translate local content, ensuring equity between the moderation in Nairobi and that for US users. And I want to talk about this because I've been on black social media for a long time, and many people have spoken about the fact that uh, Black people can go up and simply spoke, speak out against racist violence towards them, and that will be deemed hate speech or what do you call it, replying back to some racist on the platform will be t targeted. But those people who sh uh, said racist abuse and made uh, racist posts, they will stay up. And it also makes, makes a great bigger question. So if this lawsuit goes ahead and Facebook is sued, can this set legal precedent in the United States and other countries? Because, you know, where does it end? Because Facebook has been alleged to promote racist content in America for quite a long time. And who's to say that, let's say someone watches a lot of Facebook racist content and that person then goes out and harms black people in the real world. Can Facebook then be sued because they allowed that person to be indoctrinated with hate by allowing racist posts to keep going and circulating. Anyway, this is very interesting. I hope that we can keep a watch on this story. Please keep, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.